Sheikh Abdullah Al Gangohi then says about this. He says, sins frequently emerge from the worshipper. He's saying frequently emerge from the worshipper. Although ostensibly, uh, ostensibly the sin committed is a cause for divine rejection. Gen generally, when a person commits sin, the idea is that we're rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why it happens. That's why a lot of people think, think that. Shaitan makes you think that as well. On account of the exceptionally high degree of remorse, regret and repentance, the sinner attains divine proximity. So Shaitan will want to make us do a sin. Then when we commit a sin, he succeeded. Now he's going to make us want to feel despondent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the way to now, we're beaten up. Shaitan wants to essentially beat a person up further when they're already on the ground. He wants to kick them further. That's the idea, right? So the idea now is if we know this, this is why knowledge is important. If we know this, even when we've fallen, then we say, no, I'm not going to let you carry on. I'm going to have remorse. I shouldn't be doing this. I should not have done this. So the sinner attains divine proximity. That's the way to then make amends for it. And one of the best ways to do that is start doing good deeds again. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, follow up a bad deed with a good one. And it will erase it. Because that is psychologically very powerful. One is, you make a istighfar. But is my istighfar accepted or not? Is my tawbah accepted or not? So then do a, do a good deed. That makes you feel like, hey, I've accomplished something. I've got a message recently from someone who had a bit of a trouble growing up with lots of various different sins, it seems, and so on. So he's saying that, alhamdulillah, I've come a very, 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 very long way. So I've stopped doing X, Y, and Z. I do my prayer now. I do this. I do that. But there's one thing that I find still very, very difficult to feel remorseful about. And that is music. Because I was brought up on music. Maybe in a non-Muslim home, they became Muslim afterwards. So I was brought up on music. Music is just like within. So if I ever hear a, a, a music, a song from those days, then... I get into it, right? Music, that shows you the power of music. That's one of the reasons why it's prohibited in Islam. You have to remember that music is one of the most powerful influences in a human being's life in terms of what it gives you, in terms of the, the joys that a person receives from music. It's very, very powerful. It can make, make you feel sad. It can make you feel uh, hyped. It can make you feel excited. It can make you feel uh, passionate. It can make you feel... All sorts of haram things can come from there as well. So yeah, I mean, what does a person like that do then? You just keep fighting against it, right? Clearly, there's pleasures in many sins. That's why people do them. But inshallah, over time, as the iman develops, I don't blame this person for what they're saying. They're only starting off, azkar and so on. The more dhikr that a person like that will do, and the more they'll learn, and the more will they will start to love Allah, then when you start loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, things that Allah hates will start becoming things we hate as well. This is just means that we're starting off, and it's good that a person is even confessing to these ideas, they're recognizing this idea. So yes, it may be difficult, but inshallah over time, that will also become repugnant that will also become abominable, abhorrent, hated, and say, yes, that was bad that I did that. It takes a long time sometimes. There's a person that you love because you've seen many benefits coming from that person for a long time. Then somebody starts telling you that, look, there's actually something else behind it. And then you genuinely find that, but you're caught between two things. You, there's one aspect which is telling you, this is bad, rationally. There's a wrong here, but then emotionally, you want to be part of it. You want to carry on with it. This generally happens when you get stuck with somebody emotionally and you can't really marry them, right? You can't desist, you can't dislodge yourself from them. It takes a very long time. It just takes time, these things. But the point is that that doesn't mean that you justify to do that just because you enjoy that, that you can continue that relationship or continue that love for that object. It'll take time. That's all. Recognize that. And I think that's all I want to say. So that's why he says then, Therefore, 
He says, on account of the exceptionally high degree of remorse, regret and repentance, a sinner attains divine proximity. Thus the th sin becomes the medium of forgiveness. Therefore, the servant should not look at the external form of everything. His gaze should be focused on the inner realities of things. That's the person should start becoming, look at the more profound ways of doing things as opposed to external form of things in any profession, in anything that you want to master. You can't just look at the outer. You have to you have to get to the depths of it. And this is what the depths of it, this is the way it works. If Allah Most High has blessed one with worship and obedience, then one should never despise those who are not involved in acts of piety, nor consider oneself to be superior. On the other hand, if a sin has been committed, one should not despair of Allah's mercy by viewing the enormity of the external form of the sin. So what he's saying is something very subtle. He's saying that, look, if you do end up committing a sin, don't focus on the sin being so severe. But now focus on the one that the sin was committed against and his mercy so that you can actually gain forgiveness. That's the, it's not to diminish the sin for the sake of redoing the sin. It's to diminish the sin so that we can overcome that to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are a lot of subtleties and a lot of depth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us, if he grants us depth in anything, may Allah grant us depth in his worship and his ta'a and his obedience. And may Allah bless the author for opening up this for us. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.